So over the last few nights, I've had the opportunity to test two different light pollution filters from Optolong. I've got the L Enhance and the L Extreme, both the two inch threaded versions. And first impressions, honestly, both of them do a pretty remarkable job at being able to cut through the light pollution that I deal with when shooting from, from my home here within the city. Uh, the tests that I've done here are all aimed at producing aesthetically pleasing images. It's not for the goal of scientific data, research, um, analysis, anything like that. It's just, how can these filters help amateur astrophotographers produce aesthetically pleasing images? All of the tests I did were on a relatively basic setup that is pretty much, pretty relatable to most amateur astrophotographers. None of the equipment I'm using is excessively expensive or complicated. It's all pretty basic, um, similar to what a lot of folks might have in their home setup. Many of us, if not the majority of us, tend to live in heavily light polluted areas. And I'm no exception. I mean, I, I live in a Bortle class six, roughly area, and that's where I do the majority of my deep space astrophotography from. And I found without any sort of filters like this, um, it's, it's basically impossible to get any sort of quality image. Now that said, I have done a lot of work with monochrome cameras and various filter sets, you know, RGB filters for color, HA, O3, S2 for very specific isolated wavelengths of light that do allow me to image from the city. But as you may know, working in monochromatic imaging like that just adds another layer of complexity and also time to the equation that often the clouds just don't allow us to do. You might have a one, two, sometimes three or four hour window for good imaging and that might, might get me through the start of one filter set, right? So I was really pleasantly surprised to see the results that I could get with a one-shot color camera in combination with these filters from right here in the backyard, even with just one hour total integration time on the tests that I've done. So first, a little bit of background and information on these filters. The L Enhance is technically a tri-band filter that allows HA, H-alpha, H-beta, hydrogen beta that is, and oxygen three to pass through it and onto the camera sensor. Whereas the L Extreme is a dual band filter that isolates only HA, hydrogen alpha, and the oxygen three onto the filter. Both are pretty similar, but what you'll see is uh, the L Extreme tends to produce a higher contrast in the nebulae against the background versus the L Enhance, which while it does offer a bit more light to come through from the H beta, it's a little bit less contrast against the overall background. So at the time of making this video, the L Enhance filter retails for around $229, while the L Extreme retails for about $309 US dollars. So while they're not exactly cheap filters, they're for the quality, they're relatively inexpensive for what you can get out of them. So really then, what are the differences between these filters? Uh, the L Enhance, uh, like I said, it does allow that H beta to pass through. So there's a little bit more light that does come through the filter. Um, it tends to make it maybe a better option for some slower optics if you've got a higher F ratio that you're dealing with. Whereas the L Extreme does filter, a, filter out the H beta entirely. It allows just a little bit less light. So if you've got faster optics or can work with longer exposure times, that may be the best option for you. Uh, especially being that it does produce a little bit higher contrast in the light, the signal uh, against the background overall. And we'll take a look at that in a second. Either one of these filters, when paired with a color, one, a one-shot color camera, does a great job of allowing amateur astrophotographers to capture spectacular images of emission nebulae. And that is an important note there, that these filters will not work well for galaxies or other non-emission nebulae. But fortunately, there are so many emission nebulae out there in the universe that you'll be entertained for many, many years with just these in your one-shot color camera. So let's dive in and take a look at these tests. First, I think it's important to take a quick look at the setup that was used in this. Like I said, I tried to do this on a setup that was relatively basic, uh, although comprehensive throughout. So these filters have been fitted on to a William Optics Z61-2 scope with a focal length of approximately 370 millimeters. Uh, it does have the adjustable field flattener, which we'll talk about in another video, uh, paired with the ZWO ASI 294MC Pro color camera. Uh, I do have the filter set up in ZWO's drop-in filter system, just so it, it's easier to swap these things in and out. Uh, a lot of folks will just thread these directly into the image train. Either is totally fine. 
Um, and all of this sits on top of the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro mount driven by the ZWO ASI Air Plus controller guided by the ZWO ASI 120mm guide camera and an Orion 50mm guide scope, all of which is powered by the Renogy Phoenix 300 power bank. And certainly this setup does have some limitations in terms of its overall quality. It's not the greatest optics that you can get out there, but it's it's quite affordable. It's lightweight. I love being able to take this in and out of the backyard with ease. I do travel with it periodically to darker sites. So it's a really great all-in-one, all-purpose setup that, that really does yield some decent results. And we'll take a look at those here now. I really wanted to focus on what you can expect out of these filters through various exposure times, as well as a general idea of a completed image with, like I said, only one hour of integration time, but you can definitely see the differences between the two in the final results. So to do so, I, I pointed at my scope at two different objects, one, the North American Nebula and the Bubble Nebula. Reasons being, the North American Nebula is a large object, it's very bright, it's full of hydrogen gas, whereas the Bubble Nebula is a little bit more faint, it's significantly further away, which means on my 370 millimeter focal length, it's a smaller object, so much harder to pull out a lot of the faint details, but I thought that would be a great comparison to work with. Both of these objects were imaged from my backyard, which sits in a Bordeaux class six, roughly, area from right here in the dead center of a city, population of around 100,000 people. Uh, and if, if you look at this map, you can kind of see that that's not uncommon for many people in North America as shown here, but really around the world, as the majority of people are now living in these population centers and light pollution is just getting worse and worse as things go on. So if you want to explore where you live and see where you might find a dark area, what your light pollution levels currently are, you can pull up this a map similar to this, and I'll put a link in the description, and you'll see the white, the pink, those areas that tend to be around the cities are the heavily light polluted areas all the way down to the greens, blues, and grays as it gets down to minimal light pollution. So let's look first at a comparison between two single exposures taken at 600 seconds or 10 minutes each. And one of the first differences you'll notice here is on the left, on the L Enhance filter, in this area just left of the main structure, you see a lot more kind of color contrast. There's some white bluish tones coming through in the gases compared to the L extreme, which maintains a bit more of that, that red hydrogen coming through. And primarily that's a difference of filtering out the H beta wavelength that the L enhance does allow to come through. But overall, both of these are pretty, pretty spectacular images, um, especially for just being a single sub, the noise is pretty minimal at such a long exposure time. There's good structure and contrast to the nebula, to the nebula here. Uh, but the one major difference that I do want to point out is in these brighter stars, on the Ellen Hans, you do get a noticeable amount of haloing around the star here, and I, I, I believe that that's primarily related to its tendency to create some internal reflections off of the filter inside of the, op um, the optical train. Uh, it's not a huge issue, it can be dealt with, but definitely something to take note of as it's really the one major, I shouldn't even say major, it's really the one downside, the one flaw that I picked up on between these two filters. So if we look next at a 300 minute single exposure for each of these filters, You'll see that they both still produce pretty good results. Uh, you do start to notice a little bit of the differences in the overall contrast of the images. Uh, the El Enhance is a little bit less so in the main structure here. The background starts to get a little bit more gray in comparison to the gases, whereas the L Extreme does still maintain a pretty high degree of contrast. And really a 300 second, a five minute exposure is relatively easy to achieve in most setups. So I think this is a really probably a great starting point to look at some of these images. However, I think it's important that we run through some of the major differences in different exposure times on these single subs throughout. So we just looked at 300 seconds, but let's go down to, on the L Enhance, a 180 second exposure. We start to see a lot more noise showing up, the overall signal to noise ratio is diminished, meaning there's less light collected, so the, the noise is more present. The contrast from the background is less, 
And it just will get progressively worse as we go into shorter and shows shorter, shorter and shorter exposure time. So here's 120 seconds, here's 60 seconds. And you can see as I cycle through these, how it changes dramatically. Now let's do that again. 60 seconds, 120 seconds, 180, 300. And so for a quick comparison, let's take a look at the difference between just 60 seconds and 180 seconds. The difference between these two is actually pretty remarkable. How little signal we're really getting at something as short as a 60 second exposure compared to 180 at three minutes. If, uh, if 180 is the top of what your scope, your setup is able to do without getting too much star trailing, this is still perfectly acceptable. If you stack a number of these exposures, you're gonna get really great results. 60 seconds, usable, but lacking a fair bit. However, if that's what you're limited to in your setup, and you're willing to stack as many single subs as it takes to get to a, a decent total integration time, you're still gonna get pretty decent results with something like this, especially considering the fact, remember, we're shooting from a heavily light polluted area. So a 60 second exposure on an object like this without a filter is, you're gonna get a white sky. There's gonna be hardly anything there. It's almost impossible to do. So the fact that this is even an option for us is remarkable. Now let's do the same thing in the Yell Extreme filter and look at a 60 second exposure, 120, 180, and 300, and compare those. So starting here with a 60 second exposure, you see, again, pretty similar results. The contrast is low, the object is pretty faint. And as we cycle through, helps if I go the right way, doesn't it? As we cycle through, when we look at 60, to 120, to 180, to 300, all the way up to 600 again. Just as we'd expect, the longer the exposure time, the better the signal to noise ratio is, the higher contrast against the background, the better the image looks overall. So just as in the L Enhance, let's compare the 60 second to the 180 second exposure. And again, similar results, right? Where the 60 second is fairly faint, albeit usable, compared to the 180, which has a significantly higher signal to noise ratio, resulting in a brighter, cleaner, higher contrast image. But the real test, what's the difference then between, let's, let's go middle of the road and say 120 second exposures comparing the L Enhance to the L Extreme. I think it's pretty obvious that the L Extreme just does a much better job at isolating the light that we want from the light pollution, in effect, creating this higher contrast image, right? We get a similar amount of detail overall, but the richness of the L Extreme is, is, is pretty present, it's pretty obvious. Uh, let's do the same comparing the 300 second exposures side by side. And again, both of these are perfectly usable quality images from either filter, but again, we start to see some of the subtle differences uh, primarily in these gas lanes here, you, again, you see some of the, the whiter, bluer tones coming through compared to the red, but the trade-off is in overall image contrast, right? The L-Extreme just has a lot more structure to the main elements here, albeit a bit redder throughout. And finally, let's look at the one hour integration time, approximately one hour integration time on the Bubble Nebula. Like I said, it's a much more faint, further away object, smaller details to deal with, but we'll compare the, we'll compare between the two filters. So on the left, we have the L Enhance, and on the right, the L Extreme. Again, both of these are perfectly usable, quality images, nice, clean, high contrast, lots of light showing through, but the differences overall, you might've guessed, is again, in just some of the subtle details of what gets picked up. On the L Enhance, we see a little bit more of the gas just to the left of the bubble here, and I'll move into that area. Coming through, that does get filtered out on the L Extreme. So, some might argue the L Extreme does a better job at cutting through the light pollution and isolating these objects. I mean, I think it's it depends on what you're going for, it depends on the look you, you want. Personally, I do 
prefer the L Extreme. I do like the higher contrast look to the images that it produces. It gives me a cleaner files to work with, but either are perfectly acceptable. And honestly, with the difference of roughly $100 between the two filters, I'll leave that up to you to decide both are gonna produce excellent results. So final thoughts? I mean, both of these are spectacular filters for, for the price range that they sit in. And like I said earlier, the fact that I came primarily from monochrome imaging using complicated filters, expensive filter sets, mind you, and requiring just so much more time and effort to produce a decent image, I love the fact that I can throw on one of these filters, go out in the backyard, even if I get one hour of imaging time, I'm still able to produce something that's that's a pleasing result. It, it brings a whole new level of fun to this hobby that I just didn't have before living in such a light polluted area. So the ultimate question, would I recommend these? Absolutely. I mean, if it's, if it's within the budget, if it's something you want to explore and you want to spend some time shooting these emission nebulae, these filters open up possibilities that we just didn't have before. So if you want to start imaging some emission nebulae with a color camera in a light polluted area, like most of us live in now, I really would recommend either one of these filters. Uh, they both do a great job. The price difference is about $100, like I said earlier. Um, and they, they, they just open up a whole new possibility. Uh, and a lot of you, maybe, maybe you just wanna start getting into some of this and you've got a mirrorless or a DSLR and decent lenses and you just wanna get this into the filter train and give it a try without investing in too much new equipment. This is a great avenue. It's gonna work for that purpose. It's gonna grow with you as you expand equipment and capabilities. And it's just, like I said, I can do it from my backyard in a light polluted area when the moon is out. It's just, it, it's another layer of fun. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you liked it, give it the thumbs up. If, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you've got any questions, please do leave them in the comments below. I will review all and answer any questions that come through. So thanks for watching. Bye.